always remember. The past is your lesson, the present is your gift, and the future is your motivation. Stay motivated and keep trucking, y'all. Motivate. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Motivation and Box Trucking. Where you get all your information on Amazon Relay and everything pertaining to box trucking. Today we got another great video for you. Today we're going to discuss the five possible ways that you can obtain a truck coming into the trucking industry in 2022 going to 2023. All right. We came up with five methods that we figured was probably the most feasible ways in order for you to get in the industry. And we kind of broke it down for you so you can be looking forward to or have an understanding of what you could be possibly be paying coming into the industry and try to see if it's worth you. Because a big question out here is, is it worth doing it with the rates? Now, that all depends on you and your situation and what you feel is your time and what you think is right for you. So we just come here to give you motivation and try to break it down with much information as possible. All right. So the first way um, is the traditional route of renting a vehicle like Enterprise, Penske, or Ryder. As my wife just said, the first one is going to be your traditional rental route. Your traditional rental route is going to be Enterprise, Penske, Ryder, a budget. What we're going to do is go ahead and break down what it could potentially cost you if you decide to get into the rental route. All right. Now, if you decide to get into the rental route, this is what you can be looking forward to. All right. You have fixed costs that you cannot escape from. So I just pretty much broke it down to three major costs that you just will not be able to escape. And I broke it down by the daily cost because what I feel or what I realize in this here industry is that your profit margin can be real small if you're not paying attention to the numbers on a daily basis. So what we do is we break it down by the daily basis of what you need to pay every day because the, when the truck, whatever truck you got, definitely when you're renting, there's going to be a daily cost. It don't go away. You don't pause the payment on none of that. It costs daily. So that's what we did. All right. So I'll fix Cost for the rental would be the weekly cost of $600, which is the average of going around. It could be higher. It could be a little lower, but this is just the average, the nationwide average, all right? $600 a week with a mile, sur a mile surcharge of $0.22 cent a mile. And then we did insurance. The average insurance that most people would pay a month is about $1,500 a month, all right? So then when you break that down by the daily cost, you'll do the $600 divided by 7, which will equal $85.71. You have to do the average miles that the average trucker will be traveling in a box truck. So on average, people are traveling between 2,000 and 2,500 um, miles in a week. So I just did the, the low end on this one. So we did 2,000 miles a week with 22 cents a mile. That'll be $440 in the week. If you were to break that down by the daily cost of so $440 divided by seven, you will get $62.86. All right. Then we got to also have the insurance, which is on the average cost around fifteen hundred dollars. So we get fifteen hundred divided by the most days that you will have in a month, which will be thirty one to be will give you a more closer, accurate number of what you need to be looking forward to paying when you have your insurance. And that came out to forty eight dollars and thirty nine cent. When you add that all up together, you have a total daily cost of every single day of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of one hundred and ninety six dollars and ninety six cent a day that you have to compensate for before you can even get into your profit. Mm -hmm. So you're looking to get into the industry. You know, this is just a quick little uh, shortcut to seeing how much you would possibly be paying a day if you was decide to get into a truck. Side note, right now rates aren't looking great. So with knowing that, just know that you might be struggling a little trying to make profit if you decide to go to run a route with that type of cost. Right. Um, so thank you for breaking that down, Cruz. Um, Next, we have the purchase route, which is financing a vehicle. Um, Cruz will get into that and let you know what to expect for those um, daily costs. All right. So now we're going to get into purchasing the vehicle. Now, what I did, guys, was pretty much took the average nationwide 
cost or what it is costing to purchase a vehicle right now, well, a truck right now, which is around sixty thousand dollars. Now you can get it cheaper. I bought mine, you know, I cashed out, but I bought mine for twenty seven grand. You can find some decent trucks for around their price between twenty five and forty grand. But I'm just going to go ahead and be realistic of what it's looking like right now. So when you coming in in two thousand and twenty two at the end of this year, year in the beginning of this peak season going into two thousand twenty three, this is what you could be looking to be paying. All right. Price could drop next year, but for right now, this is what you could be looking forward to paying, all right? You have the average cost of $60,000. On average, with somebody with a credit score, you should be having at least a 640 or a 650 to be able to get this truck. It's going to be around 7%, all right, with a 7% interest rate with 60 months. And interest, you're going to be paying $11,284.31 in interest. With that whole entire loan, you'll be paying $71,284.31 for that entire loan. Note for that loan would be $1,188.00 a month, all right? Now, we was to break that $1,188.07 a month, divide that by 31 days, that would be $38.32, all right? Now, when you're purchasing your truck, like I said, we broke this down to fixed costs that you cannot escape from your insurance. So, you have the cost of that truck, which would be, uh, like I said, $1,000, close to about $1,200 a month. You break that down, that's about $38 a day. Now, we got the insurance. Like I said, on average, we're just going to go to $1,500. could be lower. could be higher. You just do your math. All right? So, we did $1,500 divided by 31. You come up with $48.39. Now, man, this is a debate me and my wife. Not really a debate we had, but this was just something that me and my wife was talking about when people like to include maintenance. All right? If I'm making four or $5,000 a week and the cost of my truck end up being about $2,000 and I got left over $3,000... It is an unspoken rule to know that all that money is going back into my business account. And whatever I'm paying myself from that going to be like 20% of that. It's not going to be no more than about 20% of that of what I made for the week. If if that or whatnot, depending on how I want to pay myself. It just depends on how you want to pay yourself. But regardless, I'm not spending all of that. So it's going to be in their business account. So I necessarily don't count that as a day, but you could. All right. And if you're purchasing majority of the time, you're going to have a warranty. So that's going to vary. So you may not even have a maintenance cost. Definitely on depending on what the problem, if you have a problem. All right. So I just did zero for that. So right now, just forty eight dollars, thirty nine cent plus the thirty eight dollars and thirty two cent, which comes out to eighty six dollars, which comes out to eighty six dollars and seventy one cent a day. OK, now, of course, people gonna say you got ELDs, you got low board costs, all that you add into your summer. I'm talking about fixed costs is simply coming in if you have your truck. All right. So you take that eighty six dollars and you compare that to that uh, one hundred and ninety six dollars, ninety six cent a day with a rental truck. You choose what you feel is the best option. Now, I tell you, as a person that was renting and a person that was buying a truck, I'm saying a whole lot of money with one truck. And I had two trucks I was renting. I'm saying a, lot, a whole lot more money with the truck that I own with just one truck. So that's that. All right. So the third option is um, a rental option that's a little less traditional and maybe a little less known by most people. Um, but this option is called Coop, C-O-O-P. Now, this is a company that is actually um, rider affiliated. And so they allow people to... Uh, rent their vehicles out to customers. So Cruz will get a little bit more into the details about Coop. All right. Now, Coop, if you go to Coop, go to the website, of course, coop.com, and you will just simply go to coop.com, put in your city. Um, I'm going to put in, just going to put in a major, I'm going to put in Atlanta. I'm going to put in Atlanta, Georgia. All right. So in Atlanta, Georgia, now with what I just compared to y'all on the cost of it, of having a rental compared to having a purchase, you can kind of look at these rates right here and kind of compare to see if it's worth doing. All right. You got a 26 foot box truck on here, $112 a day. Now that's more close and more in line with the $86.71 a day with the purchase cost. That's still less than the rental cost from a traditional Penske all right, so all my people out there in Atlanta, um, yeah, they got some options out here, $112 a day, $125 a day. So this one has a daily cost of $125 with 12 cent a mile. So you can just do your math uh, on that one and figure out to see if that's worth it. So um, let's say you did 2,000 miles in the week times that by that 12. That's a good rate. That's $240. If I divide that by seven, 
that'll be $34.29. If I did that $34.29 plus that 80, what was it, $86 and plus that $48, it's around $170. So with some, the option like this, you're still coming out a little better, about $20, $30 cheaper. Okay, if you're doing it five to seven days a week, um, you just do your math on that, saving yourself about $150 to $200 a week by going through Coop potentially. So that's your third option, going through Coop, guys. So yeah, make sure you're doing your research coming into this game because you have many options. As you can see, these trucks are available. So if you do or if you're having trouble getting into these major rental companies, make sure you're taking a look at this option too, guys. Coop. All right. So... Um, the next option is to go through Facebook Marketplace. Now, in Facebook Marketplace, I don't have much experience with this. I was just doing my basic research on Facebook Marketplace where I was at first looking to buy a truck when I was looking for a um, purchase a truck at first. Of course, when you purchase a truck off Facebook, you make sure you're going to go check it out and you bring a mechanic with you. But one thing that I noticed on here that if you type in the search results and put in rent box truck, they give you options. And some people have their uh, box trucks up here for rent. Like the guy here in Philadelphia got his truck on here, I believe, for $300 a day, which is hella expensive. That's more than what it is with the rental company. So I don't know. Maybe that's not a good option, but <laughs> I thought I'd throw it out there. All right. So, yeah, that's that. And we're going into our fifth and final option, guys. This option kind of pertains to box trucks but it kind of don't, depending on the aspect of how you're going into it. It more pertains to either the dry vans or the uh, rigs. All right, so this option is the, is becoming an Amazon freight partner or a delivery service partner, so DSPs and AFPs. So the difference between an AFP and a DSP is that Amazon freight partners move Amazon freight between sites such as warehouses and delivery stations within the Amazon network. Your company, you would be responsible for hiring 20 to 45 commercial drivers to operate a fleet. They will actually provide the state-of-the-art trucks. Um, so you may have seen these on the road. It's the blue trucks with the Amazon smile on the side. You would choose where to operate your AFP business, whether it's in a rented space, a home office, or another location. Now, if you decide to become a delivery service partner, you would actually uh, start, operate, and grow the package delivery business for your local community. Um, they operate out of Amazon delivery stations and manage a fleet of 20 to 40 vans, okay? DSPs focus on the building safety first work culture recruiting, hiring and coaching a team of 40 to 100 high-performing employees who are responsible for delivering Amazon packages from the delivery station to the customer's door. So that's more of the... Amazon Prime vans that you see, um, and those are. Oh wait, I'm sorry. And so those are a little different than going the box truck route, but these are ways to obtain a vehicle in order for you to join the logistics game and have Amazon uh, name already associated with your company. And with that, like I, like she said, the AFP you can look at it like that. That's middle mile. That's in between, like I said, warehouse. That's middle mile, and the DSP is going to be final mile okay so essentially the dsp has nothing to do with box trucking but it has everything to do with logistics and over here is motivation to box trucking which is also dealing with logistics so if you're simply trying to get into the logistic game you got good credit you may got some land you may be in a rural area where you have land and you have that opportunity like it says uh, 20 to 40 vans you can have 40 to 100 employees on um, right now with the uh how the economy going a lot of people are looking for jobs uh, it's, it wouldn't be that hard for you to be able to, you know, get with your foot in there. Definitely for those who are trying to do it big and scale up, guys. Right. All right. So that's today's top five ways that you can get you a vehicle and potentially get into this here logistics game, guys. Now, I'm not here to tell you if right now is a good time to join. I don't know. All right. What I'm willing to do may be different than what you're willing to do. All right. I take chances. You know, I, I, I do that. I take chances, but I'm not going to tell you to do that, guys. So with that being said, make sure that you're hitting that like and subscribe button. You get over there to my Instagram, Amazon Relay King. I'm going to start posting more over there. But the biggest reason why I want you to go over there is because when you want to communicate with me, send me DMs over there, guys. All right. We're able to answer quicker than an uh, email because, like I said, emails get uh, cluttered. 
Also, guys, make sure you get in your package. Like I always say, I recommend that platinum package because it comes with that 30-minute consultation. Let's break down your area. Let's break down your situation and see if we can make you profitable, okay? It's nicely priced. It's reasonably priced for the type of quality that you're going to get for, you know? So when that price, guys, we're not trying to rip you off. So make sure you're doing your due diligence and your research as we do. All right, guys. And like always, till next time. Peace. Big man, shoot YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs>